welcome to the Hexham Town Council of the uh, 11th of July. Um, so first of all, we will uh, ask uh, the council to hear questions from Hexham residents regarding matters on the agenda or related to Hexham. But before we do that, uh, we will just give an update on questions asked uh, recently. Uh, so first of all, uh, trees in the seal. Uh, About 15 years of life left. NCC, uh, sorry, Northumberland County Council contacted for a reply. The Trade and Woodlands Officer is liaising with the Green Spaces Officer about plan, planting as part of the management plan. So I think that one's that's, that's done. Um, the pant, a local resident asked in May for an update on, on this being cleaned, uh, so that's still with uh, Councillor. Uh, Suzanne Fellas Aiken, and unfortunately she's not here this evening to give an update. Um, Wentworth Car Park and the new car park, um, there has been a petition issued uh, by a local resident, and that has now been through a process, uh, and that will be seen by the County Council. Uh, but also, the County Council's plan for to move the, um, the white base, which are the all day parking from Wentworth um, and they will now be at the new bunker site and those white bay car parking spaces in Wentworth will be all converted to medium space so Wentworth will consist of a significant amount of medium stay four hour bays and some two hour bays current size and then uh, the, the full time bays are at the bunker site pending any adjustments uh, as seen fit. Um, cemetery Greenhouse. She was going to plan something that we have brought. Oh, thank you. Right, so I hope that's okay. So, questions? So I'll, I'll turn around and ask the residents uh, the questions. So, Nate and Lisa and Nate. Wendy Rich. Um, can I make a plea for pedestrians in this town, for people who walk around on foot, everybody who shops goes around on foot, we're all pedestrians at some point, can I make a plea for mobility scooter users, for wheelchair users, um, there are four schemes currently that Highways has produced, one for Hencoats, one for Cattle Market Priest Popple, one for the High School, and that's three. Um, they haven't produced anything at the moment, but that's another uh, one they need to. Um, and none of them are any help to pedestrians at all. They're not widening the pavements. The crossing on Hencoats is merely dropped curves. No indication for drivers that that's a crossing point. Um, the proposal at the high school, which Marianne will know, is not going to help kids walk into school one iota. Um, and I've seen Marianne taking wheelchair users out of the back place of school and she, she knows a lot of the problems of um, uh, wheelchair users up at the school. And, um, uh, and as for the 800th anniversary of our marketplace, which if I counted the trip hazards in the marketplace and walking around shopping, uh, it would probably amount to at least 50. It's an absolute disgrace for pedestrians who have to have eyes in the back of their head to, um, to negotiate that safely with traffic running through, especially on farmers market days. But can I ask that the Town Council please support Hexham Civic Society who are going to try and get some improvements in what the current designs are for Hencoats and the designs that are for Battle Hill and um, Bruce Bottle. Because they're no good for people on foot. Right, we look forward to uh, our eight points today.
things are brought up at this meeting from the residents of the town, and you can uh, sort of resolve them here. The ones that aren't resolved, where do you find the information where they go to if they go to the county council? Which meeting do they go to? So instead of bothering you every meeting, you could uh, access the website and see where, what meetings you refer. Um, well, we, 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 you know, we are taking you to come back and give you a response. Um, you know, to give you a full response to what's going on. Right, and this is your, your new sort of agenda. Well, I think it's only right to make a point of that we should, we should make sure that every question asked, and obviously you can't answer all of them in the evening, yes. is that when we do find the answer, you know, so the honesty is done there. So we're now going to receive a presentation from our excellent and town associations. And these signs represent the history of international cooperation and friendship, some at an official level, and many with informal links between people of all ages and backgrounds. Twinning, just for a bit of history, became very popular in, the, in Great Britain after the Second World War with the aim of building links and exchanges between individual towns and cities um, to sort of bring reconciliation and prosperity after years of conflict, Dresden and Coventry being one of them. We're now going to present information on our history, aims, current activities and future plans with you and discuss ways in which we can work closely with the Council to facilitate wider engagement in our visits and activities. So Marianne's going to tell you a little bit about the history and aims of our association. Okay, I'm going to try not to say Hetzingen because I said that earlier today and I just I can't say that again. So super briefly, I just wanted to say that the history of the town twenty between these three towns is that Metzingen and Wyong were twinned in 1979. So they've got a bit more history than uh, with us. But we twinned with Metzingen in 1990, and then we twinned with Noyon in 1992. So this year we're excited because it's 30 years that we've been together with my aunt and we're heading there in August, so that's exciting. So um, there's more detail if you like the finer detail of the history. I've got a nice little sheet with the finer points and how that all happened, but that's kind of um, the years that have been included in the twinning. But we wanted to tell you as well, or just refresh you about our aims and objectives as an association um, that we have. And it is to work, the first one 
is to work proactively with Hexham Town Council to promote and foster uh, the international friendship and understanding, and particularly in relation to Hexham's twin towns in Lexham and Wyon. So that is kind of our priority, is to work with the Town Council to promote that. We want to encourage visits by individuals and groups uh, from the Twin Towns, and especially we want to encourage them for young people. We also want to broaden the mutual understanding of cultural, recreational, educational, and commercial activities in our Twin Towns. So those are our aims and objectives, and they're all in <coughs> our constitution, which I have a hard copy of here tonight, if anybody would like to have a look at that. But I thought we could email one to you, Jane, and then you might be able to, if anybody wants to see it, so, Hexham Town Council's role in Town 20 is to sustain and nurture Hexham's civil links with its twin towns. And so, we are really wanting to help you to do that. And so, our hearts are for that, yours and ours, hopefully. So, that's great. We've got at least one person on our committee who is a Town Council representative, and that's Lee, and he's been just an excellent link for us. Um, but we're very open to more people coming on board and just more involvement generally from yourselves and all the people that you know, because you guys know a lot of people. So we would love to have more involvement just generally on our committee and in the activities that we do. But Kathy now is going to tell you a bit about the activities that we're involved with up till now, and then we'll speak a bit about the future in a minute. So just to highlight a few of the activities that we support really as an association, usually we have visits to and from our twin towns, many of you have been involved in some of those. We alternate those visits that, so that one year we'll travel to Metzing and Lyon, and the next year we'll host visitors from that town. So we're usually going to Metzing and Lyon one year, and we're hosting for visitors the other year. So we're going probably every year to either one of them. Uh, recently, obviously, we've not been able to travel to our Twin Towns due to COVID restrictions, but we are excited, as uh, Marianne said, to announce this summer we are travelling to Lyon at the end of August, especially since it's our 30th anniversary. That would be great to, to see them. And we hope to host several Metzingen visitors at the end of September, which will probably link with the Hexham Abbey Festival. Um, we supported visits from in the past from Hexham Village Band, Hexham Churches Together, many groups of QE High School students. We facilitated an art competition between students in all three towns. I think that was judged by the mayors in the respective towns. And in 2014, we supported the Voices and Choices exhibition, which many of you may have seen in the Abbey here, uh, which has also travelled to our twin towns and were exhibited there too to commemorate the Great War and the centenary of the Great War. The Hexham Quakers <coughs> led that, but with lots of input from our association to facilitate information for that exhibition. Um, we've taken, we've even taken over a football team in the past, so, uh, so well, hopefully that's something we can do again. Um, so for more details on our, our own events, and there are many more, our website, which you'll get a link to later, um, shows a lot of those things and illustrates them nicely. The, the association has facilitated participation from Metzingen and Royal in our annual remembrance commemoration too. In 2014, in a very poignant symbol of peace and reconciliation, your council invited Dr Ulrich Fiedler, Mayor of Metzingen, to stand shoulder to shoulder with our then Mayor, Terry Robson, to lay tributes on behalf of our respective towns. And it's also hoped this year that a few words of peace and reconciliation will be received from both Wyon and Metzingen Mayors for inclusion in Derek Kennedy's address this year. So, um, In addition, there are plans to organise a parallel peace walk with our twin towns in November around that weekend in light of conflicts around the world, including the current situation in Ukraine, with support from yourselves as councillors and local Quakers. And we're hoping that might end in a live streamed event, or if that's not possible from an IT perspective, we shared photographs in all three towns. The association and its members have maintained regular contact with our fellow committee members and friends via Zoom calls during the pandemic, 
And in addition, we have local conversation groups and online Zoom sessions, which help us learn, maintain, and revise our French and German language skills. But I just want to be clear here that we do not, we do not need to be an expert in either language or even speak either language to be able to visit our twin towns. Um, we've got lots of sort of mutual friends who are very good English speakers, and it's amazing what you can get through with gesture as well. Um, you don't have to host in return either if you want to visit one of our twin towns, but we obviously hope that people want to build on their new friendships that they make when they visit there. Participation is open to all, and we really want to get wider participation from all areas of, of, of Hexham in our uh, future visits. Um, so we're going to tell you more about those exciting plans later. And we also organise a range of local social and fundraising events because it costs quite a bit of money to host people when they come. Um, and we also like to subsidise travel for young people to go to Mexico in one or two. So we're going to hopefully, if the IT works, <coughs> um, show you a brief clip to further introduce you to our beautiful twin towns and the range of activities on offer. <laughs> because 
we want to move forward in a slightly fresh and new way. We're sort of in this brilliant time of reset post-pandemic and we, we have been thinking about how we can do things to include more people generally and get people involved in town twinning. You know, we don't want it to be just one coach load sort of every other year. We don't want that, we want to, we want to be doing loads more. And we've had a, a chance as a new committee. We've only had one meeting, but it's becoming really clear that we've all got a sense that we want to kind of hit a refresh button in a way and do things slightly differently. On a practical note, as a committee, yes, we're quite new and we've actually lost some really sort of long-standing members of the committee who've served their time, if you like. And one of the things we've got, we've got a void that we need to fill and that's the treasurer. We really do need a treasurer to help us move forward. And we wanted to tell you that tonight because maybe one of you or perhaps somebody that you might know could come on board with us and help us in that. Um, we've got, um, yeah, some exciting new ideas. One of the things that's become really clear is that uh, we just want to raise the profile of Town Twinning and we want it to um, include perhaps more visits and more toing and throwing just generally. And we think that the way to do that is to think about sort of focused interest groups and think about getting people on board. So for example, there was an amazing day of singing a couple of weeks ago. Hexham, Hexham Community Choir was 20 years old a couple of weeks ago and had an incredible day of singing in the town. There was a concert in the Queen's Hall, a fantastic day. And we were thinking, that could have been an opportunity to say to Noyon, to say to Metzinger, have you got any singers? Would you like to come and join us? Send a contingent over and we'll host them for a day of singing and a weekend in the, in the town here. And likewise, we'd love to be able to take interest groups, maybe like, I don't know, anybody really interested in film or gardening or crafting or whatever it is, but maybe start to think about smaller groups going more often perhaps to then augment that bigger trip that we do in our sort of more traditional way. So we're beginning to think about how can we, how can we sort of galvanise smaller groups that are more focused. That's kind of our sort of new thinking as we move forward with the town. And we'd love to just be engaging with the wider community in Hexham with different groups from different backgrounds and just being as inclusive as we can. We don't want it to just be on Remembrance Day that we talk about Noyon. You know, we've got some signs in the Market Square to Noyon and Letzingen, but we'd love it to be more about people coming and going and really trying to include as many people in the town as possible. So we're excited. I hope you can sense that we're excited about this and sort of moving forward. But what we'd love as well is kind of to just collaborate more closely with you as a town council and have your ideas as well so that we can sort of move forward together with this really exciting sort of long established links that we have. We'd love to just, yeah, do that a bit more and then we can reach out to these other towns and it's when you're reaching out that you get stuff back and you know that's what makes us excited because we've got such great friendships that have come so quickly and it's so easily really from just having gone over there and met people so we'd love to share it with more people but we do need I think just more help and we definitely need a treasurer folks so if you could help us with that that would be fantastic as a committee but um, thank you so much for having us to speak to you and it's a big year for us because we, we're sort of hitting the ground running with our Noyon trip in August and then we've got Metzenin coming in September. So we'd love to give, gift you a leaflet for your fridges to keep us at the forefront of your minds and think about how if you've got any ideas or if you know of a group that could be just the, just so ripe and ready to
to go, or to maybe think about liaising with one of the towns, please tell us. Lee is on the committee already, but again, that's open to all of you as well. So I hope, I hope we've done enough just to refresh your members of town twinning, and we're excited that Derek's coming on the coach to Noyon this summer. But yeah, we want it to be uh, an exciting future with more happening, with more people in the town, just generally. So have a think for us, and if you have ideas, please be in touch with us. Okay, we'll go for questions. Thanks. Thank you. First of all, when I moved to Hexham uh, 12, 13 years ago, I was excited that there is a town 20 in Hexham. It's so important mm -hmm. to keep the communication and the relationships going with other countries um, because we're all the same and we all have similar interests and, and needs. And to have two town twi uh, twins with us is amazing, I think. Um, um, and you're doing great work, so thank you very much for coming here tonight. Um, I'm, uh, many of you know that I'm, I'm from an Anglo-German background myself, so you know I'm, I'm a product of Trampton in a sense. <laughs> um, so I know the value of it. Um, you've asked for um, committee members and treasurers. Um, I can't really say much about that. I mean, all of us do about at least three or four committees mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah, and you're busy. Quite, you might know perhaps. But that. the fact that we're, we've got Hexen TV here, um, and we're hoping to get the word out there. Yeah. Um, now we know your needs, we can pass it on to, to other people in our social media, maybe, Jane, I don't know. Um, but what I'm really interested in is, um, I've been thinking about this a while, but I haven't, you know, I haven't had a job, but for example, I'm involved in climate action here for the town council, the climate champion with John and Mike and the rest of the council. We do a climate fair in, in October, the next one. I'd quite like to know what Medicine and Noyon mm -hmm. is doing because mm -hmm. they will have solutions to things that we're still thinking about maybe. Likewise with how we are welcoming the Ukrainian refugees at the moment. They might have ideas that we haven't thought of and it would be good to, to liaise with them. So again, I think certainly from those two points of view I could benefit a lot from speaking to people over there as well. And I speak the languages so I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very good at writing in French. So. <laughs> So yeah, as far as the stuff and if we can link up, that'd be great. Mm. Yeah. Penny? Uh, yes, that was very interesting. And I was really interested in uh, the way that we were talking about opportunities where we can link up, because as mm. particularly this year, there are lots and lots and lots of events over the 800 years in the marketplace, all sorts of things, yeah. that it would be really interesting to have um, you know, people from another place, another country participating in, and some will lend themselves and not. But I went to Noyon with the village band. Mm -hmm. We had a big discussion about cultural exchange that never came to anything, but I still think that, there, that there's room to that. And I'm like, we went as musicians, but I'm a fine artist as well. And I always thought it would be really interesting to have, do that th through the three towns where you do a residency. In a different, different, in a different town mm -hmm. to the one that you that you originated mm -hmm. from. Um, so that's just an idea, really, because I because I think that that the cultural exchange mm -hmm. is really really important, and it focuses quite easily on place and food and yep. traditions. Yeah. But there's quite a lot more that we that we can share. Um, so I think it'd be interesting to have that conversation, mm -hmm. especially if you could apply for a grant to do that. You know. mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you for your presentation. Any, any more questions? So uh, I'll follow up TC because uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put the other back to you so you can read the chat. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for coming to my I've been on the team for seven or eight years, and it's the first time anybody's spoken uh, in depth about Town 20. And there's a lot of misconceptions, including some of my own. Uh, that town twinning was a little bit uh, for those in the know. Mm. Uh, it was inaccessible and it, it related to a, a particular social class that was in the know. So I'm, I'm delighted that some of those myths have, have mm. been dispelled. Uh, I take Penny's point completely. Um, what I would look for, and, and people I work in the sports world, 
uh, sport and young people mm. is, is something that, that's an easy hit. Yeah. Um, we have schools now going to Australia and different parts of, of, of the world. Mm. That would be very easy or easier yeah. to, to organise for young people and families and, and culturally. And the music that Penny's touched upon there, it, it never know. even if it was once every two, three years mm. where we would go there or they would come us uh, but something specific mm -hmm. that people can hang out on. A lot of kids that have never been abroad, mm -hmm. there's a misconception by everybody that everybody thinks we're a pop uh, yeah. city and the kids go all over uh, the world. A lot of the children in, in Hexham have never been abroad and this would be an opportunity that wouldn't have been given to them otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to see you perhaps work with some leading time, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, with, with sports clubs. But particularly, we've got fantastic, well, fantastic schools in the area, and it, it was from one of the school teachers that they intimated to me that they would welcome trips abroad from schools, and and there's, there's that comfort in a school organising it mm -hmm. rather than individuals mm -hmm. who, who may have other things. But welcome, uh, you know, your presentation was good, it was informative, and it's given us all something to think about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're excited because. Um, I'm, I work at QEHS, so having taken on slightly nervously this chair role, I thought to myself, right, I'm going to get in there. So I told the Modern Foreign Languages Department that they're now staring at the new chair, <laughs> and I've, you know, I've had some really good discussions already, and we were playing petanque at QEHS two weeks ago, in, in an, on another hot afternoon it was, but we found a, a place and a space that's perfect. And so some sixth form French and German students were, sorry, it's, it's under, oh, you can't do that, it's that way. So we've started some petanque with a view that I'm thinking team t-shirts, let's get a group that can go and play, it would be fantastic. So this, you know, we've started something. And uh, the A-level students particularly, I got the teacher, she said, come, come and talk to us in an A-level lesson. So I feel like we can get, that's obviously in the secondary school, but again, you know, there's, um, we could be going younger. And I think we, we're both thinking, Kathy and I, and, and the committee, we are really wanting to work it in August when we go, because, you know, those ideas and those people that we can speak to, I think we're going to have a very long list of, you know, kind of things and people that we want to try and create, you know, some links, some fresh links to think, okay, well, how can we, how can we discuss this? How can we think about what you're doing climate-wise in the It'd be so interesting. So we are going to have quite a big agenda, I think, because we need to seek out the people that are there in the town that are kind of going to make a move and shake there that we can talk to. Well, I so, came into Town 20 very much from trying to support young people because I came in because my daughter was a student rep when she was 16, 17 at the Creek Community Queensbrook High School yeah. on the committee. And I got involved because I could see how beneficial it was to her and her friends to be able to make those links and to travel and to, to, to help their language skills and everything else about it and, and to build those friendships. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I've always been there trying to say we need to get wider engagement. It may be that we need your support to actually access some of these streams of funding that are out there that we don't know about because it would be great to be able to get a pot of money that we could actually help young people and children that aren't able to go mm. from a financial perspective and really support them to say we can pay all your trip to go over there. We can support you, we will provide you with you know secure sort of accommodation we've actually checked it out we know you're going to be staying with families that are going to be really receptive it'd be a really good experience for you to go and just meet don't need to speak french or german which is really good to go and see what it's like to mm -hmm. live in germany because you learn so much mm -hmm. yeah. Lee, Lee will bring in Lee, Lee's our, our um, liaison on the Tenbrin. yeah thanks for that uh, <laughs> Is amazing. And um, go back to Penny and Steve's point. I mean, these are both things that we're working on in terms of, you know, how can we make town training a thread with our cultural activities and also poverty proofing, so that these kind of activities aren't just the sort of, you know, domain of middle class people. You know, we have to make sure that we're including low income families as well. Um, I just wonder, though, on a practical level, um, you know, given that we currently have a government, I do stress currently, 
um, that seems really determined to sort of you know tear us wholesale from the fabric of, of Europe socially and economically. Um, sort of what the ramifications of that have been for you organising the trip to Noyon in terms of you know you talk about more reciprocal visits, given that we're now limited in terms of how much time we can spend um, in EU countries, um, given the rising cost of insurance, mobile phone roaming charges. Just whether any of these things have come into your planning and the information that you've had to give out to people who might want to go? We certainly have, and, and particularly as well, the, the extra COVID restrictions and different yeah. countries are keeping an eye on the ball of what changes in terms of regulations for entry to different countries. Um, and I think, yes, there are, there are restrictions on what you can take into the EU. You've got to make sure that your passport is stamped on exit from the EU to make sure that you know that you've only been there for a couple of weeks. And because it's not stamped where you come, when you try to get back in, they might think you've been here for 90 days and 180, which is you're allowed 90 days and 180 if you're a British resident to, st to, to stay in the EU. And, and after that, you're not allowed until the next 180 day cycle. So there are things like that, and additional costs as you say, roaming charges, insurance, fuel is going up. So, you know, to, to travel to Metzingen, we usually have to fly uh, because of the distance. It's about um, 20 miles south of Stuttgart. Um, there aren't direct flights from Newcastle. I have taken a direct flight from Edinburgh before now, but usually it's been a two flight via ship or Heathrow. Um, with all the sort of logistics that you've heard at the moment going on, that's not something that you know, we're still waiting to hear what our next visitors are going to do about coming here. But I think we need to subsidise certainly a, a proportion of people going. Um, if we're going to facilitate this wider engagement, we're going to have to look at different funding streams that we can access Lee, really. I'm really excited about the portal that mm -hmm. we're trying to do. You want to say a bit more about the portal? Because that's something that we just It's a bit of a long term project, this, but just very quickly. We're sort of looking at during lockdown, we found out about a town in Poland that's twinned with a town in Lithuania. And um, because of sort of you know isolation that people were feeling, they set up a, a two-way portal where there was a view over each town's main street or marketplace, and they could literally go out, see each other, and wave at each other through this portal. And it seemed like quite a nice sort of tangible way of linking up. Um, so we're sort of exploring, you know, what that might look like, what it would cost, what the, the IT implications would be. Sort of a, a medium to long-term project that we're looking at, whether it's in the Queen's Hall or in the marketplace, whatever. But it's sort of it's in the pipeline anyway. I mean, there are screens that we haven't used before, like the forum showing an outside cinema, um, or you know, there are different screens that people have used for, for showing big events. So it's whether we can capitalise on that. Yeah. 
Um, so that's really good. Um, so, so you mentioned um, the mentoring delegation is coming in September. When? What, yeah. Do you know the date? I think it's about the 26th. It's, a, it's the Friday. The 20 something. <coughs> yeah. yeah. It's to, co it's to coincide with the Abbey Festival. So, so, so the 24th is a Saturday. Is it right? Will it be there? It'll right. be the Friday before that. Yeah. 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 So, woohoo! <laughs> because, because, because. We say what time will this end? First, then, um, all 800 years. Ah, Market. So, obviously, it's 800 years of uh, Pexham Market. Mm -hmm. Not Market Place, but actually the market itself. Getting its uh, sign of approval. Uh, and obviously, we want to do mark those 800 years mm -hmm. you know, with, the, with the big event. So, um, one of the first things we've done in this is probably presented it officially. Um, you know, we had a, had a presentation um, uh, the other day where we asked a student to come up with a, a, a design. So, we went to high school and said, uh, Students come up with a, with a, with a design, and, uh, and Belle Burden. Came up with this fabulous design, uh, which represents the shape of the abbey at the top there, um, and the M B in the market. So you get the, the H and the M, the Hexham Market. Um, you've got the colours of Northumberland. You've got the twelve twenty two and the eight hundred years. Yeah, so isn't that fabulous? Mm -hmm. So we've had these fill up, and you'll start seeing these in the old window. If you, if you walk around the town, you'll see them in the old window. I, I am having some co some very terse conversation. Oh, Let's see. I hope they're going to be constructive conversations with the county council on them. But there we go. Um, but these are. Well, we will, we will be taking one of these to France as a gift, and also we'll be giving one to Germans right. also as a gift. And if they're coming on the twenty, so this, this event goes on the twenty fourth. Perfect. It all ties up. Nice. Did you see? Coincidences. <laughs> 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 So that's brilliant. So, mm -hmm. so um, you'll have, we'll have to put them on our invite mm -hmm. list. Um, um, so, I, so I think I've, I've moved into uh, mayor's announcements here. So, um, so that was that was one of the mayor's announcements. Was uh, was 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 that? Um, and also got. Um, Can we give a round of applause? Yes.
So I, I host those in the first one, there's about 200 people there. Um, Suzanne Fairley uh, hosted the second one, that was again circa 200, was that, was that those types of numbers? So Pet, Penny Brennan hosted the third one. Um, oh, is it the third yeah, one? Four. The fourth, not the fourth one, so oh, four, 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 four now. So we seem to be getting around the two, 200 mark, uh, where that's been very, very uh, pleasant to us. So, you know, it's all going well. So just keep spreading the word on that, that's good. Um, uh, so we opened the Travel Lodge, uh, uh, along with uh, so Councillor Hall and Councillor Sesta joined me, and there was a whole host of people there, uh, Stephen Wilson, I've got done for that one. Um, so 69 bedrooms, they've said straight away that uh, from day one it's been full. Um, they, they are really impressed uh, with the demand that's out there. Um, uh, we, we, had, we had a tour, really, really nice. Tra travel lodge. Um, there is a huge demand out there. Um, they will fit in nicely into this town. Um, I don't think they'll make any damage to other businesses because um, you know other competing businesses with, with regards to bed breakfast or, or hoteliers because that is such a big demand there. So they will fit in there nicely. One thing they did say to me, I mean they had a very senior officers there um, who were really interesting to talk to and they said one thing that they've done through their assessments is that for every pound spent in a travel lodge two pounds extra goes into the local community in spend so they said so, so we asked them said well how much of this looks like 40 pounds a bedroom so so basically for, for one night so 80 pounds is spent you know and, you're, and that's 69 bedrooms and they're saying they're all full so you're kind of thinking like, oh, that's, 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 a, that's a lot of energy going into, into the, uh, the local economy that wasn't there before. So really, really impressive. Um, they also sent quite a big delegation and a lot of them hadn't even heard of it and never mind, um, you know, being here before. They were just standard or, or, or pretty town but what meant spend. So, so that was all, all impressive. Um, uh, we, we had the market stall on Saturday and that, that was all great. Again, sunny day, everything's going, going great. We're getting lots of positive um, messages from people, you know, they like that the market stall there so they can just drop in and, you know, have a conversation um, with us. Um, you know, we, we keep a record of, of what the issues are, so we've, we've got that and we'll look to, to address them. Um, attended uh, an anti litter. Uh, campaign uh, with Suzanne Felsaken. Um, this was run by the QE, Q, QE High School, but it was really bringing in all the feeder schools in the, in the, in the Tynedale area, uh, around about 11 years old, and it had brought them all together, split them all up in, in, in the pockets and on, on the tables, and then, and then they all had to like, talk about litter. Um, sustainability and all, all, all the things around that waste and everything else. And, oh, God, it was just honestly, it's, you, you just like a bottle of energy from, from all those kids. It was just, just wonderful, honestly. It was so good. And it was a whole day event. Um, really, really interesting. Um, and, you know, we've got a whole load of champions there who are now going to go back to their schools and, and really champion the cause about, about, you know, like litter turned into waste and turned into sustainability and all, and all the things that so that was a fabulous day. Um, the, 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 the next one I attended um, a tea tour, which was, uh, I, I couldn't spend a lot of time there, but uh, this, spent, this was something run by, um, well, sponsored by Waitrose, and it was uh, injured um, as, uh, um, armed forces personnel, uh, and it was just going around and it was doing some charity work, and, and, and you, you could have you could have problem with and speak to some forces people and it was to bring, try and bring forces people who are in the area they have been travelling all around the country and they did a drop in at the waitrose in Hexham and there's some uh, harrowing stories on that one yeah. um, but it was nice that they were doing those types of things and the so I've had some excellent little things to do this is the, the, the most the most interesting and the most left field one was a, was a 
acquaintance of mine from many years ago contacted us. He used to work for the English Football League and he's still got relationships with the money that the sender up to all the different clubs and he, he has relationships with the Sutherland uh, AFC and Sutherland AFC do with his outreach and they've been taking these kids who are 15, 16, taken to the sill on Havens Wall where they're going to spend a week there and then, and then they have time just out. So they're walking the wall, coming into Hexham, being given little tasks to do and go, go and see. None of them have ever been to Hexham before, you know, like, and we, we are, and they, 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 they asked me to go and say, we're going to do this debating thing. So they did that and I said, we're going to do this thing called Ask the Mayor. I said, all right. So we did it as a conversation, as opposed to a question and answer. So we did it as a conversation, but there were 70 kids there. And the messages they gave to us um, about what they thought of this area was astonishing. They, they, they were talking, saying, that you know, none of them had ever been to Hexham before. Just couldn't believe what a fabulous place it was. Couldn't believe, you know, I stopped talking about know, the history of how we're going to do this 800 event. And they were absolutely blown away by like how green and pleasant, you know, on the wall is coming into Hexham, like having just a little town where you walk around and just in, enjoy the place. And one of, one of the girls says, says, How come Hexham is so clean? Pleasant, green, and has no graffiti. And, you know, and, and, and I know we kick ourselves a lot, thinking, you know, oh, that's happened, and this has happened, but you know, like, these were fresh eyes seeing the town, and you thought, like, wow, what, 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 a, what a message to, to take. <coughs> other people were saying, like, they had to go and talk to other people and, and ask them questions about the town as part of our, part of our national citizenship. You know, just saying, what a pleasant body of people, like someone was, you know, to, to talk to that everybody would talk to them, nobody would dismiss them, would it? See, everybody was warm and welcome to them. So it was a, a, an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, really, really left, left a strong image on me. Um, I've got a second one to do uh, in, a, in a couple of in a weeks time, I think. Um, still doing a similar with, it, with another group, group of um, children from Sunderland, uh, but really interesting. Uh, Sutherland came for a while, they had a one-to-one -one chat at Interesting, that, that, you know, what the, what, what the thought and that, that, that vision of this area was just, we just astounded by it. And you know, as one, one lad was six years, he says, I'm, I'm going to go home now. I'm going to tell you, tell you, mum and dad, I'm going to come here, bring the heads and show them what it's like. I thought, great. Mm -hmm. That's that's <coughs> you know, it's, it's really fascinating. Right. Um, so that's my um, my um, my messages, and um, I was going to, I'm going to pass over to Mike. Uh, who was do just a little conversation about um, school competition. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, so um, along the lines of the town council climate emergency and um, county council's carbon neutral target for 2030, uh, we're launching a school uh, competition. So I think the young person's theme um, is quite clear tonight, especially with, uh, with, with Ben here. So um, children that are aged 5 to 11 now, in 2030 will be 12 to 18 in many years. And really we're just looking to get their input, a young person's input, into how they would see 2030 and how we would travel, how we would heat our homes, how we would reduce our waste, what our renewable energy and the use of a carbon footprint service. So the whole thing is just geared for the kids to, to give us their input because I don't know what, I don't know what that, that age group um, is thinking, so we're asking them to produce a poster or a short 60 second video. It's going to be opening um, this week, and the competition will end on the 1st of October. Where we'll, we'll announce the um, winners, and then what we'll, um, the second stage is a two, two stage process. On the 1st of October, we'll to launch the um, county county carbon footprint survey. So, um, we'll do some articles in the press and we'll change our own job of. Um, Posting some of the uh, posters that, so yeah, just to let everyone know. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done. Good. Right, so next item is, uh, to, is number eight, agreeing with the Council of the Payment. Uh, so we are looking at uh, page nine. Pages 13 through to uh, 
Just a um, comment, it's, this isn't been to the Community Engagement Committee, um, which I find a bit strange considering it's about community engagement. Uh, can I just ask if we bring it to the Community Engagement Committee just to discuss in maybe a bit more detail? Uh, so so, so that's, that's a good question. So the, 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 there was a reason why, Tom, but it's a good question. Um, one thing where, and, and I, did, I did discuss this with, with, with Lee, it's been the Community Engagement um, uh, uh, chair, the where what wishing to put an application in for this council to be called um, quality what's it called quality. the quality award. Currently, we've got the foundation which was achieved um, in the last last few years, and we want to achieve the next quality award. Now it's all Jane's fault. This okay, <laughs> so so because because, because Jane is retiring. No, but um, it's because Jane is, is, is retiring, and we, we and, and if we push this through the community engagement, it would, it would just take back that bit of time, and it wouldn't be here until this full council again until September, which would be. We think this is a key plank to making that application, and it was really just to gain time. So the proper process would have normally been through community engagement, doing the work there, bring it here. But obviously, always the town council or the full council makes that decision. So we're trying to do it through expediency only. Policies are there to be reviewed always, so so it can be pulled back in several months' time before they've actually done to change it, amend it, and all that type of thing. But um, that that was the reason why we was suggested to come here is just for expediency, so Jane can stop that application prior to her leaving. I hope that is a satisfactory. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I've got my point on yeah. that. It's, it's a difficult one, Derek. It is. I, I understand that. But if it's about quality assurance, it's about doing the right thing. Uh, and it, forgive me, Jim, it, it's not necessarily to coincide with Jim's retirement. If we're doing things the right thing, it must go back to the community engagement committee and come back. That's just my view. I understand the, the argument for it not. But if, if, if we're seeking that, that's what we should do. Um, yeah, probably in an ideal world, Stephen, I agree with you, but I think everyone's got the opportunity anyway to make comments on it. So by taking it to the community engagement, you're not, you're just extending the whole process, but people still have the opportunity without that part of the process. Like anybody can object to anything or add anything now. Yeah. Well, all I'm worried about is that we set a precedent that, you know, to make deadlines that are a bit ambiguous. I understand completely you the around that. That's just one of my concerns, yeah. that this is what we have subcommittees for. Yeah. It's quality assurance, and it's kind of short circuit to, to for our own Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any, anybody? So, Alison, so you want to say something actually about the content? Yeah, yeah, so my, my um, thinking on the actual content of it, there, there's one sort of glaring um, element missing, which is the, the business element of community engagement. So my request would be that if, if we are moving forward on this tonight, that we could add business um, as part of the um, community. So there's two sections at the beginning where it's omitted. Um, I'm not sure whether this is, is particularly relevant for the um, for the policy as it stands, but the, um, we have discussed um, having some guidelines for social media, mm -hmm. for our social media, um, how and when we post and, and what needs to be included. Um, I don't know whether that needs to be included at this point or, um, or maybe later. Um, but that would be another, another consideration for me. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, so, so um, that would be the social media policy, but we could, we can, we can actually put it point back and just see yeah, we can give a cross reference say that we have a social media right. policy. Okay. So we could work that in, in yeah. to get say um, that, that is a social media policy. Um, is that is it, is any, I mean, it does mention the word business businesses in Yeah, but there. not not in that not in that first ah. those first two sections where yeah. it's like key objectives or yeah, something. Yeah. Um, so 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 would you like to get so, so some some explicit comment of No, just actual word business as a business to be included as part of the community.
Now I'm going to use whether this was used for commercial, uh, commercial as well. Because mm -hmm. businesses are quite a broad. Yeah. 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 comments on um, point three um, it talks about methods to ensure engagement will include and it goes on to list quite a few which is all pretty good but one of them is um, word of mouth which I just think is not really necessary within within the document uh, it's not something we can go around well, telling everyone about all the all the all the all the all the also on, I think, also point three, um, about halfway down, it mentions about um, the town council will operate a gateway service to its office to ensure local people and communities are referred to, uh, to the correct organisations. Um, I just would like to add in there, uh, the town council will, where appropriate, um, because I don't think, um, I don't know, I just wanted to make sure it, it's... Um, we have set on, on the wild goose chase for something that isn't relevant to the town council. Sure. Um, <coughs> yeah. sure. um, also on point, point four, um, item four, four, um, we mentioned about considering uh, holding consultations and surveys where necessary and uh, appropriate and to make results available. Yeah. However, we talked about in the last um, council meeting there was a survey of I forget how many people 14 15 people and that was um, made available it wasn't really representative of the town um, so I admit if we're going to make it available I think we need to um, before we make it available we need to consider the, the size of the survey and also the representative representativeness of the survey as well yeah, so, so if, if, we, if we had in there like material or something like that would that be that would, yeah. um, well, yeah, I guess yeah. that's another. Yeah. Well, those will put some words in that one. Because I think that's a really important thing. Yes, Matt. Um, yeah, just back to. Are you finished, Tom? Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Yeah, just on that paragraph three to the first point. Um, no, so sorry, which, 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 which one? On page, on page 14. 14. Yeah. We've got three of Hector Town Council and Community Engineering. Yeah. Um, just on that last. Um, uh, the point that was made about uh, communication by word of mouth. Um, I'd like to have that included because I speak to quite a lot of people mm -hmm. and inform them about things I'm going to do. People just don't pick up all the social cues or all the press, uh, and most of the time they just don't know. So, uh, it, you know, that is quite a useful value for, for me and for a lot of other people in this room. So, I'd like that included. Okay. Um. Yeah, can I just second that? Actually, I'm just thinking about the school. Um, yeah. yeah. So much information gets passed on the stall globally, so I didn't know about that. We've got um, in there about key collaboration with key partners. Um, well, for the school it's more there. informal than that, though. It's just it's not it's not uh, a collaboration exactly. It's just somebody comes up to your stall and asks you a question. And yeah, I, I understand that word of mouth will be um, will be yeah. used, but I don't think it should be defined as a as a method for the town council um, to go about. Communicating to the, to the public. Well, it sort of is though, <laughs> because we, I mean, we were talking we're about this. Staying in the schools, I mean, we got yeah, we were talking about this on Saturday, and I think one issue we have um, with events and things is that, despite what I said, it's in the school, people don't know what's going on. Um, however, many posters you put up, how many, how many things you post on Facebook, as I'm sure will. Mm -hmm. You know, people came up to us at the picnic. Um, came up to me at the picnic and said, oh, they just basically had to be walking on Full Street, and that was the first they knew of it. Um, so the word of mouth, I think, is really important, and I, I think it's a way of engaging people that actually are difficult to engage with often. Fair enough. Is there a better expression yeah. than, than word of mouth? Um, that, that's what it I is. I mean, that, that, yeah. you know, in the, in the town prior, you could argue as word of mouth. Do you call out some of the human, just human contact? <laughs> Well, you must find that any piece of legislation that are, 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 are in the town's word of mouth. There's a better, must be a better way of describing it. That 
have in corporate or other things that you're saying. Uh, face, 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 face to 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 face I suppose then that, because when you first approached me about it, I mean, I was like, I was a little bit yeah, yeah, unsure I, about it, uncomfortable yeah. with it, because, you know, I'm a stickler for sort of, you know, it's a process, follow it, and then it's um, all through to really. So I would propose that maybe if we approve it today, that we specify a meeting of the community engagement committee where it is brought to us. Yeah, yeah. So that we can. Or a lot of people are just going to come back every time. Yeah. Possibly the September community yeah. engagement committee, yeah. that's. Yeah. I just thought that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Right, so can, with, with those amendments that have been mentioned, can, can, we, can, we, can we vote on this to say it would be great? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you for your input. It's really important. Good. So get a crack. Come on. I want you to join us. Right. Um, right. To resolve that the council complies with the criteria for the local, local council award scheme, quality award safety rules. So, this is, as I say, that was a, was a key point <coughs> to go into this. That's what, that's what the thought was probably missing out of having us as the town council, I guess the town council, ticking all the boxes. So, page 17, 18, 19, and 20. Has, uh, has an explanation of what this award scheme is. 
and we've got the very best local councils to provide a framework to support local councils and meet their potential. So we, we have currently got, we are currently at foundation, but one of the only ones in Northumberland. The only one. They've only got in the So this is why it's really important, this, maybe I'll just do the next bit. Really important that we are the only one, so the council before us is the only one who had that foundation level. So, so we've got a pretty impressive goal. The, 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 the step that we want to go to next is, is the quality of um, um, And as you can see, this is what it's all about. It's about, you know, about effect, you know, about deliver effectively, effectively for their communities. That were, that there's documentation and that's information in place to, to, to operate lawfully in accordance with all the rules and stuff. But it's also about us that demonstrate that we, we, treat, we, we achieve good practice. Governance, community engagement, and council improvement. And obviously, we're putting an awful lot of effort into community engagement in this last year and a half. You know, the stores and all the other things that have gone on, and the social media has, has, has rocketed as in the engagement on that. Um, so, it's about going, going above and beyond legal obligations and just not just doing the bare minimum. This is about us adding the value and leading it. Continuously seeking to you know opportunities to improve, to achieve that goal. So this is this is not easy, and um, this is a, this is a high bar. Um, as you can see, as, as, a, as a thing, but it's only hundred pounds. But this will be a good test for us to say, do we achieve this? And if we don't, we will, you know, we will get feedback saying we need to do this, we need to do that. So it is a good way of actually challenging ourselves to say, actually, if, if that is the things that are missing, they will actually tell us and say. You need to do this and this. So, um, um is Mr. Mayor, so who passes it on? And the NAC, it's the, 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 the National, the National, the National Association of Local Councils. So, so it actually goes away for assessment by that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, really, it's a question is, do, you, do, you, do you think we're ready? Do you, do you want to go for it? Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask a question? Um, I know the person who used to run Nelf is, also, is retiring as well, isn't he? So that's the North Oh, okay. So that's just the North Oldman's arm. Yeah, so, so, that, so, so we'll go through the North Oldman arm to, 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 to the national. Yeah. What's the time frame? Like, when will we get an answer? Do you know? Or? There isn't one. It took a year for the foundation of all to be sorted. Um, but that was partly because North Oldman Nelf lost the original email for some time. Um, okay. And there were a few bits and pieces that needed to be tweaked. I think this is ready, but I don't know how long it will take. Okay. I'd like to get it in as soon as possible, uh, but it may not be. It, there may not be feedback before I leave. Yeah, I think we should go for it because, like you say, even if we don't succeed, we'll know what areas need to be looked at mm -hmm. so that we can constructively address them. Yeah. Is everybody in favour? Yeah. Okay, great, excellent.
closures for the farmers' market are already in place. So, so remember, a little bit is closure. Oh, the little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Ah, so we need to be clear about what we're talking about, because they're being clear about the end of the letter. Okay, so uh, a new friend of words is number two. Um, just uh, some of the discussions that we've had leading um, um, up to this. So, uh, in terms of the discussions, the three that we talked about, uh, that was talked about were one um, that we talked about 20 miles per hour for the town, um, and it looks like NTC just ignored us um, for the last few years. And the one, uh, second one sort of ties in with the English heritage. Work that's happening across the national area, we're going to put new paving and raise lamps in from Priest Popple. But it would be good to have um, some ramps on Bowman Street at Benton Statue, at Queen's Hall, the Marketplace, and the Market Street Community Centre. And having stood there on Saturday talking to people, you can see what the cars are doing and that would slow down traffic. And then the third item for me would be um, active travel considerations around the marketplace with the roads. Um, it's a buzzing area and again, I think standing there. And it would be good to look at how we could um, make that great for pedestrians and people that want to access it. Yeah. So that would be my thing. Yeah. Can I just write about something? It's not English heritage. It's historic English. Okay. okay. Uh, but I think it's important. It's going to
very soon. They say that is the right thing to do for the whole of their nation. Wales are looking into that as well. If you go, if you go to the, you know, we're going to talk about France and stuff. If you've ever driven in like Northern, certainly the towns I've driven in Northern France, all of it's, if you ever go in the towns, it's 30 kilometres, which is 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, so, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not the law. <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, it's, it's, God hasn't written this down on a part of a stone. It is up to, to, to councillors. <coughs> And I, and I think it's, I think this is a real challenge between councillors. All fourteen of us agreed to this last year. The three county councillors went went to the county council, said the same thing. All the councillors were actually in town deal. It kind of supported us as well. And then you just hit that brick wall of like intransigence by 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 parties. And and, 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 and I, I I think we should have this as number one on the basis that. Let's have a vote them again and say, look, you are Scotland, the political will, the democracy of this town and its councillors because you think the book is more important. But didn't Cambridge get it last year? Well, I think they got bits of it, yeah. Mm. So they've got 20. Yeah, yeah can, I, can, I, can I add to that? Because I, I think that the way that we challenge it is also, it's about neglecting our democratic process a lot or just ignoring them really. But I think that the more evidence that we can have that they're out of step with other places, the better it is. So I agree with you about the 20 miles an hour, there's obviously a lot of evidence there. In terms of road closures, which is something that really dogs us because we're trying to close the road for a big massive event and they say it's going to cost £1,200 or whatever it is. I'm wondering, um, Jane, if it's possible for you to do a bit of research on what other county councils charge for road closures? Because if this is just a random sum that the county councils made up, which is huge and therefore acts as a deterrent, we discover that other county councils, councils who are equally beleaguered financially are charging 50p, then we need to cite that. We've got to, ev we've got to challenge and evidence, yes. challenge and evidence, and say, why are we so different? What is the we keep calling it out on the basis of argument and evidence? Yeah, I think I've got a fair point. Sorry, John. I've got a suggestion that actually might not cost anything. Uh, and that is, I'd like the County Council uh, Highways Department to consult with us mm -hmm. to actually say we have this idea of doing some work in Hemcoats, for instance. And it's going to create massive changes to the um, to the way the traffic's routed around the town. Um, what do you think of that? And to actually ask us and to say, and that might have given us the opportunity to say, well, we can see that the roads in a poor state and need repair. But have you thought about widening the footpath? Have you thought about putting in a cycle lane? Have you thought about just asking the people in the town for their opinion on this. And I would like uh, not to find out about such work from Facebook, which is how I find out about it. I'd like to be consulted as a council, as a town council. Mayor, on that point, I yeah. thought uh, the you know, fellow town councillors have made. Have been fine. <laughs> the highways, we've invited all the people that we support. Yeah. We talk <coughs> only about the democratic process, and I, I, I'm, I'm not on my way through with you. These are part of the democratic process, they're not, you know, autonomous bodies. Could we ask them yeah. to come yeah. to discuss some of the issues in Hexham? Mm -hmm. Now, we're, uh, uh, that's fairly uh, liberal in, in the sense that we haven't come with a pre plan agenda. My view might be different to everybody else's. But at least they'll be able to explain yeah. their view. And, you know, the other members of the public have, have, have talked about uh, the pedestrianisation or, or the view of the pedestrians in it. It'd be very useful to get a you know, collection of ideas and see what their response would be. Well, I think that's an excellent idea. But, I mean, the, the, what, what I would just add to that is if we're going to do that, is, is if we have several bullet points that we want them to discuss with us. You yeah. know, so, so it's a structured debate and we're like, we want to talk about, for example, you know, we want to ask we're asking for 20 million hours across the town. Can we come and discuss that? You know, can we talk about how 
the marketplace, what the future of the marketplace is, you know, and how we're, how we're operating after travel and all this type of stuff. You know, give them several bullets and say, right, this is this is one of the questions we're going to ask you. Can you come in and let's have a look? I think that's a really good idea. Even if they came within the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah. It's better off than we are now. Yeah. We're exactly the same thing. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> that we ask them how communication between us can be improved. Because there is a gulf into which things are dropping and it's becoming more and more, I think, exacerbated. Uh, the separation between the county council and the town council. And I have no idea, as a town councillor, what the county council regards as its duty is in terms of our of the relationship between the two of us. I understand what we try to do to, with the county council, that we lobby, that we influence, that we talk to our county councillors, that we have responsibilities that, that, that we execute, and I think we execute them very well. But that it is not a two-way process from where I'm standing. And, and I mean, quite often we could be doing some of the county council's work for them because we're here on the ground, but there seems to be a sort of Gulf or a gap, and I, and I don't, I don't attribute it to disregard. Well, I'll be wrong, but basically they don't, I don't recognise the value of that relationship in the way that I think that they should do. And I have no idea, in terms of their statutes or their processes or anything, what their responsibilities are in terms of communicating with us. No, that's a, that's a uh, and I don't know where we found that out. Don't forget the heavy communications in and say what's the process, but we we need to start having that conversation because we are the people on the ground that are being, being complained to about the fact that it's in the Quran that paint coats is being closed. We, we look like idiots, but from everything else, because we've not been informed about something that's happening on the ground. And that has just happened with the Benson. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. not it's not acceptable really. I don't no, it's, 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 it's good mm -hmm. place. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw some things. Is there any more debate? Any more ideas? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw some, some things up. So, we've been asked for three. Um, I have actually spoke with the um, the councillor who's, who's ahead of this process before uh, councillor John Riddle. And I, and I don't blame him for this by any stretch of the imagination. I, I think it is much deeper than, than, than the councillor is. Um, you know, saying, look, you know, I've, I have totally no faith in this, this, this process that's been asked, asked for three things because mm -hmm. I've, I've just never seen anything come up with it. Um, and, he's, and he was going, you know, yeah, so he was going to have a think about, about this stuff. Um, but we're here again this year, which I'm really surprised at because I thought we were going to have a think about doing something else, but they've, they've come again. Um, so I think I think we should I think we need to dig in on the 20 mile now and say, look, this is our democratic the agreed thing. We did this last year. We want it, we have not changed our view because because if we if we if we don't do this, they they won't have them. You know, they, they just go, oh, you just say, oh, you just say, oh, they have to town council and just come up with something else and just say, oh, that, and, and, and it's just a constant process. We, we have to make a stand here and go, like, oh, this is, this is what needs to happen. Because it's, it's, a, it's a simple, it's a cheap thing to do, and, and, and it's a proper whole support. So I think we should, should go keep that one. So I'll ask, for, are we in favour of doing that? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so are we in favour of that? Okay. Right, the next one, which is what well, might highlighted was about having raised so so we know when we spoke with the heritage action <coughs> zone that they're gonna they're gonna put like like raised walkways on the road when people are crossing the roads. And what Mike was highlighting was to say do similar down Beaumont Street so I think that the, the areas we suggested were the key crossing points which is where Beaumont the, the sorry the Benson's statue is because that's a place where you come you cross over that's a very broad road that and, and, you know you have to go to the area so a raised area there so that makes it easier to walk over and, and slows cars down the second one which is the one that 
always alarms me is the one the Queen's Hall to the park because you, you, the same lines are there, again, just some sort of raised area. And the third one was at the marketplace to the Abbey, was it? Yeah, yeah, Abbey to the marketplace. Yeah, Abbey to the marketplace. And then the fourth one was the community centre, across the road from the community centre to the bush on the side yeah. And the fourth one then, I know, I know, we've spoken about that before. So that is item two. Would everybody be in favour of that? Yeah, could I just ask, is that what we used to call a sneaking police? No. No, I think it's like, just like a race. Mm-hmm. So, so the role is raised, so it's yeah. So, yeah. So that's that's what it's called. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, I think it's called a courtesy crossing, isn't it? It's called a courtesy crossing. Courtesy crossing. Oh, that's so much nicer than running over police. <laughs> <laughs>
actually the people of Ukraine who have found themselves subjected to an unprovoked invasion. Refugees fleeing from the conflict are being welcomed into our town through a supportive network of local hosts and volunteers, including one of our town councillors, Ariana Daisy. The council would like to acknowledge this important work to offer sanctuary in our town to those in need. And the, the proposal is that that would go to our website and be visible to anybody who, who looks on the website. Okay, so, so, um, so there's a motion. So we need a second that. So somebody officially second that. So okay. a, it's going to officially second that motion. Um, right, so we go into debate. Does anybody wish to debate this? And if now, I'm not going to disrespect that. I'll take your name now. Yeah, and, and, fine. And I'll do it as a, a complete yeah, thing rather than your lady. That's not disrespectful mm -hmm. to you at all. Can you contact with that? Yeah. Can you contact that as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just take out, so we're taking out, including one of our town councillors, Ariana Davey. So we'll just remove that. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else wish to debate? Okay, we're going to move to the vote then. Okay, that. To note the um, 13 is to note craftiness of the detail in the June. have said that it would be protecting jobs. I think there are only about four jobs. You protect four jobs at the cost of you know, what could be an environmental disaster. I think in the past, people from NCC have said that it could be a serious flood risk, which would damage the, the, the time uh, at some point. And a lot of waste materials could quite easily be washed in to the time at some point. And uh, Thompsons are promising us um, the possibility in the future, maybe in 20 years' time, a lake and a place where you can build hides to watch the birds. <laughs> and I think with that promise upon one hand, and you think of the the huge lorries which will be coming out of there <coughs> on an already busy road, very, uh, is it very early, very well, um, at that Egger Junction. It's already far too busy for the road. And the, um, you have, so you have the noise, the pollution, all of that, and it, it just doesn't stack up. It's not, it's not worth it. And maybe if Thompson's the people who want to extract this gravel. Maybe if they want to protect their jobs, uh, uh, these poor people, maybe they should be looking at different building materials which are sustainable. Maybe they should be looking at how can they get into tapping the vast resources of Keeler Forest, the 
or whatever. Um, wood is the sustainable building material of the future. And maybe they should be looking to that rather than going back to the previous centuries building materials. Um, does anybody want to say anything else to that? My only view as an adder. I didn't want it to be lost in the subcommittee's minutes. And then when people ask the town council uh, as a collective, what's your view on it? I, I think we, we, we're there to oppose it for the very reasons you, you've uh, not worked there. Can I just ask what the closing date is, John? I'm sorry, I have no idea. Just of that. Time. No, it, it, sorry, excuse me, I was looking on my phone yeah. because I've just been contacted by them, so I can circulate what the, in the lobbying group oh, I yeah. it, so I can circulate that, um, but I was just looking for it. If that's what the Alpha Town Fasters would like. So it's yeah, it's yeah. 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 If you are putting in a, a complaint about this, and I hope everyone will. Um, you can also mention that the land where this gravel currently sits underneath is actually decent farmland. At the moment, we should be protecting that. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but the email I got actually said that um, a, a similar application was recently refused on the 27th of May by the Worcestershire Council. And he sent the minutes in. They're long and worth reading, <coughs> but actually, this might help with our refutation of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone did come up to me on the stall and just say we were basically that it was like the NCC already just to look it through. And um, they did say we really need to get things moving in terms of um, protesting against it and making sure that yeah, everybody does something. Do we need an emergency motion for that part? I think so. I don't know. You know, if, it, if it, something like reaffirms its position yeah. um, in opposition to the instructions. It's raising the profile, but I think that's the problem at the moment is so many people actually don't know yeah. about it. Do we need to put that on our social media about? We are object objecting, mm -hmm. and here is the um, the link to where you can object as well. I don't yeah, know. but we need to establish that as a town council, we do. It has to be an emergency measure, it has to be alerted the mayor. But we can't wait a month. And we can talk about the So, so I, was just, I was just asking, asking Jane about, well, 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 obviously, the, um, the council has already written um, an objection, so we've already performed that duty. Okay. Um, but people don't know that. I think that's the point, isn't it? You know, people don't know us. Is there any conflict then in us making public a, a, a rejection of planning um, application when it hasn't been resolved? No, uh, I mean, it's not in our parish, but obviously it's very close. Um, we had asked to be consulted, although it's not in our parish, but weren't, um, put in an objection anyway. I don't know what the situation is as regards whether it's going to tie down lack or will be an officer's decision. I know there have been a lot of objections. Um, but the only the only issue would be if you were on the county council planning committee and you were directly involved in making an objection. You would then I'm assuming then you couldn't go to yeah. So so I wonder if it's permissible today wait a month for the next four counts, about two months for the next four counts, whether we can have an emergency motion come up with a straightforward statement that we object, you know, that we support what the objections against this or, I mean, you brought it up, Stephen, so... I'd support that, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. reaffirms its opposition to mineral extraction yeah. with, you know, it might open the bit, but th there's a policy there that people clearly understand that the town council have discussed it and opposed it, but just it just, yeah. rather than wait up for it. And even if we do it as a general, so we don't even have to refer to the specific, yeah. if that's an issue, refer to the specific planning application, yeah. but just in general we are against any form of mineral extraction. Yeah. 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 
So, so, so yeah. Jim, do you just want to see what your suggestion is? Just, just to, to, so your suggestion is that Jim, Jim suggested that the following happens. Um, I mean, motions are supposed to be put through. You have to put it through. Um, but what we can do is because the seven council has already made it's you know already made that written thing. What, what James suggests is that we go is that we write again and put our, our, our projection in again against the um, application, saying that the town council has the whole town council has discussed it further, following the PA discussions and the letter, and we send a second letter just to say we reaffirm our opposition to to to, uh, to the extraction. And can we put that on the website? That we've done? Uh, peace uh, walk. It was noted uh, that responses from the town twin uh, is still pending. If agreed, it was noted that it, this should be on the Saturday afternoon, 12th of November. I think that's probably a bit close to the um, Remembrance Day. Um, and um, although I, I'm happy for the peace walk to go ahead, I think maybe a, a different day would be more appropriate. And I would suggest the 21st of September, which is actually International Peace Day. And I think it seems more, um, yeah, appropriate for me. Labour, well, it would be the obvious person to on the sun. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we've got a meeting this week. There's something that I'm happy to go back and, and discuss. We, um, I think at the moment there was a feeling that we want to have a reflection of the need for peace. Uh, that's why we wanted something explicit about peace at this year's events, not designed in any way, shape or form to detract from Remembrance Sunday. That's why we said it probably should be on the Saturday. Um, I th don't think there's anything massively controversial in the idea that we don't want, that we prefer not to actually have to have Remembrance Sunday, we prefer people not to have died in the first place. Um, and just that we would like to promote peace moving forward. I'm happy though to go back to the subcommittee and discuss the date, because um, obviously a lot of it will depend on when the twin towns are available as well. Um, but just to reassert again the idea that everything that we're doing on that subcommittee is to enhance Remembrance Day and make it as inclusive as possible, taking into account the current state of affairs in the world. So that was where that came from really. And to include Town Twin as a nifty little Thread running through everything. Mm -hmm. So, so the, if, I, if I recall in the meeting, didn't they say that um, the 11th of November is a public holiday in France? Yeah. Um, every year, obviously, not, not in the UK, but in France. Mm. Um, and they were going to hold, now you're going to hold the peace walk on that 11th of November. Yeah. So I think I think no, I think Tom I think I, I, I did actually get raise that point about like should that should that be mm. another another day. Um and I, I wasn't aware I, I think there was some international day I can't remember. Um but that that was the 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 the, 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 the that was the where the debate went was Okay. Well I I, I still think I uh, strongly think that the um the twelfth would be too close to the Remembrance Day. Um, I think on a, on a day where you're remembering people that fought and died um, for our country, um, to then um, go on a, a peace walk, although I, I completely uh, understand the, the um, peace walk and, and what it means and no one really wants to go to war at all, um, so I agree with that, but I, I do think it's probably a bit too close um, to the 11th. 
Um, so I'll read really in fear then I'll be able to speak. I wasn't at the meeting, sorry, but I, I just sort of think, isn't that the point? <laughs> Having it close unless I've missed something, because it's, it is that idea of, as you said before, right, is it disrespectful? in an ideal world, nobody would have died, so it's, it's remembering people that have, but it's also at a similar time saying, let's, let's remember those people and let's move forward with that and use that as a way of hopefully bringing more peace and thinking that that is obviously the ideal situation is that there won't be any wars. So I mean, it, it, to me, it makes sense to have them closer together rather than separately because it then becomes, I mean, you could do it on the, the day of peace as well, possibly, but I, I think to have them apart doesn't seem to work in my mind. It sort of seems, in my mind, should be together. Okay. Yeah, and interestingly enough, in Germany, we, did, we mentioned France, but in Germany, the 60th of November is the date that is similar to Remembrance Day. So it ties in quite nicely. It's the same week, isn't it? Which, which date is that? It's the 16th of November. The 16th of November. Yeah. It's not called Remembrance Day, but it's the time within when the churches remember the dead. Right. And honour them. Chief. I don't want it to be too controversial, I'm, I'm not taking issue with anything anybody says, but the last thing we want is a discussion or an argument around peace day of all things. I can think of a council that springs to mind who might, might have a different but I don't <coughs> controversy that surrounds that, but you know, undermining what the actual principle is. Mm. So I'd, I'd support Councillor Pearson's concept of it, that it's, it's put back. I mean, Remembrance Day is part of the peace. For me, it's part of the peace day anyway. Somebody who opposed all the wars in Iraq and everything. It, it, it's uh, that's the time that is well really necessary. We remember people who've fallen, but you know the, the nonsense of what war really is, uh, particularly when you know we look back on those wars and what, what they achieved. But I wouldn't want them too close together to avoid any controversy that might come out. Take it on board, I just don't think it's controversial. And I certainly don't think it's disrespectful. I don't understand how peace can ever be disrespectful. Um, it's what we're all striving for, isn't it? It's what we all want more than anything right now, especially. And I think this has to be presented in the context of what's going on right now, and the fact that there is a, a yearning out there for that to be reflected in some way. And this seems to me to be quite a nice, subtle way of incorporating that into what we're doing but not having it on the Sunday mm -hmm. and obviously there's no implication that anybody has to be there or take part in it you know nobody has to be there um, so I don't think it's particularly controversial mm -hmm. and I don't think it will be unless it's made controversial and I certainly don't think it's disrespectful yeah. I just wanted to ask Lee a question really um, I don't see it as being controversial or undermining the Remembrance Day, but could you just give us an idea of who's going to take part in this March? Indeed, anybody can, um, so it would be open to anybody, and we are sort of explore, exploring ways of involving the Twin Towns, whether that's online or, as they said earlier, sort of just us all, all three towns holding one and then sharing photos on our respective websites, something like that, um, but it would be open to anybody. Do you foresee members of different churches, for instance, taking part? Possibly, yeah. Um, I mean, Wendy Breach is in touch with various faith groups for Sunday, so it would be something that we would probably inform them about as well. <coughs> but the invitation would be thrown open wide. It's very much in its infancy at the moment, I have to say. We're going to meet him this week. Um, we'll be discussing it further. And I will feed back what's been discussed here as well. That's what, that's what it's for. Yeah, considering that we are twins with a German town and a French town, I, I, I think it's hugely potent actually, I don't mean that in a bad way, I think that's in a really positive way, in terms of that notion of town twinning. I think it's, I think it's a really amazing idea. And I wonder whether, I mean, I'm just making this up as I go along obviously, I wonder whether if it came under the auspices of the town twinning, rather than the town council, mm. because the politicisation of the military, war, 
nationalism is really, you know, something that we can't ignore because it goes on all the time here. Um, and I regret that very much. Um, and I think that that's, this has raised an interesting issue about what, what we want to achieve by it and what we want to take on, what discourse we want to open up, because it will be opened up. Whether we want to hold our ground and say, well, this is about peace, actually, and it seems to be quite a cute thing that, you know, do we want to be falling out about peace? How ironic is that? So I just wonder whether it may be better embraced by the town clinic mm -hmm. with the support of the town council. Mm -hmm. And then it is an apolitical, unifying thing that comes under that umbrella of three countries that experienced war at the same time with the devastating consequences. A conscious intent is three minutes I was happy every day by eight o'clock, so I think I mean thorough thorough debate, I think all the points have been raised, Lee's Lee's captured all those and then you can take that for reference to the on the committee uh Right. Um uh, so that was twenty seven twenty Yeah. <laughs> 